Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Hasmira from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation. Welcome to APU and Industry Live webinar session. Today is our third day. I am so excited to share with you that APU Live webinar session will cover the area of data science, AI, cybersecurity, fintech, design, engineering, and actuarial studies. So um, while waiting for others to join for our live session for today, I would like to invite all of you to join for our APU e-open day. Our counsellors are ready to guide you through for your further studies options. So um, today our speakers, uh, Dr. Sabinder, uh, Ms. Nelfi and Ms. Anurada, will talk about the importance of uh, choosing the right, right university program for the, uh, to prepare for your future. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sabinder. Hello everyone. Thank you, Asmira. Thank you for the introduction. Okay, so um, today, uh, this is our first session. Okay, uh, today we're going to try to answer a very important question. Okay, basically, which pre-university program to choose? Okay, so, uh, but unfortunately, we don't have a definite answer to say that foundation is better than diploma, diploma is better than foundation, or this is better than that, or things like that. So yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a definite answer. But what we'll do here is that we'll guide you. So you'll be able to determine which is the best university, uh, pre university program for you. Okay, because it's quite unique. It, uh, a lot depends on what exactly you need, what exactly would be the best for you. Yes, yeah, so we will just go through some of the um, pointers which you can use to make that decision. Yeah. Okay, so the slides, uh, Ms. Nelfi, can I have the slides? I can't see the slides here. Okay. Can't see the slides here. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I can't see the slides here somehow. Uh, sorry. You shared the screen, yeah? Okay, all right. I think it's still... Okay, fine. I can see that now. Okay, so thank you, Nelfi. Here, all right. So uh, at APU, we have our foundation program. We have our diploma program. And we have our certificate program. Yeah, so the main uh, pre-university programs actually foundation and diploma here. So um, both these programs are excellent. Okay, fantastic. We have a lot of students in both these programs. Okay, and they choose these programs uh, because of a certain preference or, you know, uh, due to certain... Uh, okay, I'll go through this, the, the, the differences and then you will know, yeah? Okay, so the first pointer here would be the entry requirement. Yeah, the entry requirement for diploma, three credits, and for foundation, five credits. Okay, so if you have five credits, you may choose foundation, otherwise diploma would definitely be your choice. The other thing is about duration. Yeah, duration, so uh, foundation is a one-year program, three semesters, but diploma, Okay, diploma, we have, uh, diploma is two years. So generally, most of the programs in diploma will be for two years. Okay, five semesters. But uh, for certain programs like uh, engineering, it will be six semesters. So a little bit, one semester extra. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit here. So diploma is um, two years program because the first year of degree is incorporated into this diploma, hence it's a bit longer. Okay, so diploma sometimes certain students like after diploma, they want to take a break before going directly into a degree program. Okay, for various reasons, maybe for financial, uh, you know, because of finance or perhaps uh, they want to have some uh, working experience before going into degree. So this is definitely the better choice. Okay, if you need, if you want to immediately go into, um, uh, if you want to immediately work or you want to take a break, diploma. Uh, foundation, on the other hand, is a one-year program, three semesters. So students who start foundation, okay, typically progress immediately into degree. Okay, immediately they progress so it's actually more of uh, the, the the flow is uh, like uh, immediately foundation and then you go to level one students from foundation go to level one yeah so that's why it's a uh, it's shorter than diploma that's one reason yeah so they go straight to level one of degree year one year two year three or year four if it, uh, um or uh, extra for certain programs like engineering yeah so that's how it works Okay, so the other thing is uh, certainty. Okay, certainty, uh, diploma, usually students who go to diploma, they are they sort of um, have sort of decided what they want. Yes, yeah, so uh, some are quite focused in the sense that, you know, okay, they know they definitely want to do accounting example. Okay, or they want to do finance example, or they want to do a software engineering example. So they immediately go into that specialization. Okay, diploma in finance, because it's very, very focused. Okay, however, foundation, all right, okay, we, we do get a lot of students who come to us, like, you know, after SPM, they've not really decided what they want. Okay, and I don't really blame them because, you know, in school, it's a different structure altogether. So they're probably not so uh, exposed yet as to what they exactly want. So these students usually go to foundation first because like in the foundation program, yeah, we have, um, uh, we have different routes. Okay, we have different routes. Example, like, you know, a student thinks that, you know, okay, I think I want to do engineering. Okay, and the student starts engineering after one or two uh, modules, the student decides that, you know, no, I think I don't want engineering, I want to go into computing. Okay, there's still some kind of flexibility here. Okay, at the uh, second or third semester, student can actually move to the um, computing program. Okay, sorry, the computing route. Okay, so that's possible. Yeah, so that's about uh, flexibility. 
and the variety that we have in foundation as compared to diploma. Okay, and this is also tied up to the earlier explanation that I gave you because, okay, it is uh, a very focused program. So once students complete that, okay, they can actually work. Yeah, so it's a bit more focused. Okay, next would be internship. Okay, internship, if you would like to, again, have that industry experience, you want to go and work for a while, yeah, diploma would be a better choice because in diploma, for most programs, internship is required. Okay, foundation, it's just one year, so no internship during foundation. Internship, uh, students will experience internship later when they start their degree program, yeah? So the other one is financial aid. Okay, so uh, here, uh, scholarships are available, okay, whether you go for foundation or diploma, of course, depending on the uh, what kind of scholarship and they've got their own terms, uh, uh, regulation uh, rules and so on, okay, their own uh, requirements for scholarships, okay, but uh, if you're looking at PTPTN loan, PTPTN loan is only available if you sign up for a diploma program. Okay, so it's only available for diploma. So that's another pointer. And pathways, okay, pathways, progress to degree um, to year one, yeah? Like I mentioned earlier, diploma, usually it's like immediately you go to year one. Okay, one year of foundation, year one, year two, year three. Yeah, and uh, diploma, okay, um, you go uh, upon completing diploma, okay, student goes straight to year two so year two and year three and for some programs it may be longer yeah so that's basically some of the differences which you can use to sort of decide yeah which pre-university program you should go to okay so i'll just give you a few more um pointers on foundation so basically this is like what i explained earlier okay more details here entry requirements for foundation program yeah, so this is SPM, those with SPM, IGCSE, O levels, UEC. Yes, yeah, so these are the requirements. Okay, next we will see the okay, study progression, exactly what I uh, explained earlier. Okay, of the SPM or IGCSE foundation program, then degree year one, year two, year three, or year four if um, um for some programs so degree program areas there okay so if you want to know more details about the areas yeah about the pathways what you can go to okay please do visit our website okay it's all there or do contact us we can give you more details into every uh, program available at APU yes yeah, so this is for foundation and we always end our foundation program with uh, this um, appreciation uh, day okay so we have this appreciate uh, appreciation award ceremony every year for students okay so we recognize them although it's you know um what uh, it's like it's only foundation just one year and you know you know the, the 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 aim is always basically to progress to degree that's the main aim at, at the end of the day and then graduation but this to us is very important Okay, students uh, work very hard. Yeah, so we recognize all this Academic Excellence Award, Leadership Excellence Award, Outstanding Achiever Award. So this is something we find, you know, very motivating for students, okay, just before going into degree. And I'm very proud to say here that we have seen excellent results here. Okay, Academic Excellence Award is not just for one person. Yeah, so we have certificates as well, and they're usually like so many students who actually excel so well, okay, in foundation. All right, so there, so these are some of the pictures, yeah, to show you that, you know, how we end the foundation program in a very positive tone, basically. Okay, so for diploma, yeah, so this uh, the details here entry requirement for diploma program okay spm three credits igcse o levels three also uec also three credits okay grade b and above and um okay certificate yeah past relevant certificate program certificate if you have a certificate program okay we will uh, please refer to us okay so we we will go to and explain to you what's the 
certificate program, yeah, the relevant certificate program. In fact, we at APU, we have our own certificate program as well. And this is the study progression from diploma to degree. Yeah, so these are our diploma, as you can see, these are our diploma programs, yeah, information, and communication, technology, and so on. So we have a lot of computing-based, technology-based uh, programs, yeah, business, international studies, design, accounting. So these are our programs, like I mentioned earlier. So after diploma, student goes straight into degree level two, degree level three, four, four engineering. Yes, yeah, so this is how it goes. And okay, so diploma also we end in a very nice tone. Okay, there's a graduation ceremony for diploma students. So most of our diploma students usually stay back and continue degree with us. Yes, yeah, so this is a very nice, um, you know, celebration, I would say, yeah? completion of diploma with us. Okay, all right, so uh, that's, um, if you need more information, like I said, please visit our website, please contact us, yeah, anytime. Okay, um, so we will guide you accordingly and answer all your questions. So uh, I, uh, I will stop here for now and I will hand you over to our academic leader, Ms. Anuradha, and our program leader, Ms. Nelfi. So they will further uh, explain to you what we have or, you know, uh, besides academic, what more we can offer. Yeah, to you, Anu. Thank you, Dr. Sarinda. Thank you very much for the quick tour. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, these are the activities. Okay, um, what you saw earlier is actually the program entry requirement, uh, your pathway, foundation, diploma, whichever program you sign up, foundation or diploma, we have to tell you that we take you beyond classroom. All right. We take you beyond classroom. So what you see on the screen, you've got like excursion. Okay. So when you sign up for a module, okay, it's not just the theoretical part we cover in the classroom, but we also expose you to um, industrial visits and then when you come back you will talk about it yeah in class so we tie theory and practice together and then we focus a lot on team spirit and leadership skills um any module or program or course you sign up they'll give you the definition of leader they'll give you the definition of leadership you can do autobiography yeah you can study biography and all about adolf hitler and so on all these famous world leaders but Reading about them doesn't mean you can become like them. So what is important is the opportunity to practice. So this is where we come in. So we provide a lot of opportunities in terms of activities for you to participate so that we can groom you to become excellent uh, leaders. Okay. Social events, whether you are a student or you're an employee or you are a homemaker, you can be anybody but you need a social life. So that kind of social life we bring to you on campus itself. So we organize a lot of social events on campus. Of course, now with the lockdown, we are still doing it, but virtually we are doing our best. Okay, so a lot of emphasis is also given to um, social events. And then cultural exploration is another area and community engagement. APU is a university with uh, uh, students from about 200 over countries. So if um, I'm sure you will one day come to the campus, if you go to our main atrium, uh, we even displayed the video earlier, you'll see a lot of flags there. So students always, oh, that's my country, that's my country. We have got so many flags because we do have students from so many countries. So it is our obligation to give you that kind of cultural exploration and experience so we focus a lot on community engagement related um, activities as well so now let's move on okay so this is the evidence yeah okay you see the keyword there graduate aspire career fair i'm sure the first picture you can see one yellow box there you don't need an introduction yeah to know who they are such a big icon so when we talk about career, most of the students, they think of career when they are finishing their degree. 
But here, we talk about employability at very early stage itself, which is pre-university. We, do, we don't just talk about employability. We are not just, just putting up banners, you know, if you could see 100% employability, but we do focus on that a lot. And we expose our students in pre-U level itself. So Graduate Aspire is an opportunity for you to meet leading organizations in Malaysia. You can meet all the big tycoons and our students at pre-U itself, they are exposed to this kind of opportunity. Yeah, so that's our Graduate Aspire, okay? And uh, next is, um, okay, um, Gardenia. I don't think I need to tell you what company is that, all right? So if you look at the first picture, we have got two of our staff there who also look like students, <laughs> okay? So we've got, um, a, a, this is actually part of our module. It's called Introduction to Business. So students who have signed up in that module, the, the industrial visit was part of the course, was part of the module. So students were taken to Gardenia to look at the business flow, okay, to look at how business is operated. And then when they come back to classroom, there'll be a lot of uh, follow-up discussions and so on. So this is what we mean by learning is not within the classroom, but it's beyond the classroom, all right? So that's our commitment, yeah, in terms of industrial visit. Next is cave exploration. So which subject is this? Okay, so now when we talk about cave exploration, this is actually, this was requested by students. Students, especially foreign students, to be very honest, if you look at the first picture there, these are the students who actually asked us, asked us what a CAFE is. Because CAFE is not part of every country's geographical feature. So when we took them to the CAFE, they were amazed. They are like, wow, this is a CAFE. And what surprised us was even local students because all we know is Batu CAFE. Okay? This is not like the Batu CAFE you see, but this is... Uh, real deep inside. So we provide this kind of opportunity for students, not just studying. We also need a break. So whenever you need a break, we take you again to the nature. We give you a break, okay, for you to relax, for you to, you know, wind down a bit. And then we will see you again in classroom. All right. Next, that's cave exploration. Okay. Recycling project. All right. Recycling project, if you could see, uh, this is actually part of one of our modules as well. The Gardenia was part of Introduction to Business module. This module, if, you, um, if you're a foundation student, you will be studying this module in your first semester itself. It's a compulsory module. It's called Personal Development and Study Methods. We call it PDSM. So we have a lot of acronyms eh, which you have to pick up. Okay, so in PDSM, it's one of the learning outcomes where you have to commit in some kind of community engagement project, something related to humanity and so on. So this was a very big project students organized. So the whole university got involved in it. All of us were involved. So we gathered materials for about a week. We bundled them up and we sent it to the recycling center. So this is one of our most successful projects as well by students. All right, so that's part of our module, okay? Academic uh, element. All right, okay. Egg drop challenge, team building. Remember, we were talking about team building, leadership, all right? So theoretically, we can tell you what is a leader, what is leadership. After that, we take you to the ground and we ask you to prove. That's where you've got to exercise your skills. So these are the methods we use where we, we, we will organize activities, we organize workshops, yeah? we take you out of the classroom context and we give you the opportunity for you to practice the skills. So this is where you acquire the skill. This is how you are groomed to become a leader, a good team player and so on. So if you look at the pictures, it's again a combination of international and local students. So it was a very uh, interesting session. Okay, all of us had a good time, a great time. We got a very good testimonial from students as well. So that's also part of our teaching and learning in APU. And yeah, workshop. 
So this is a workshop. This is not out of the campus. This is on campus yeah, in one of our classroom. I'm sure you have heard of this word critical thinking. Critical thinking is one word which is, I think, abused a lot. Anything will fall under critical thinking. When somebody asks you why your marks are so low or oh, not good enough, not much of critical thinking. So again, we do teach what critical thinking is and so on. But we also organize activities, workshops and so on so that you really, really get into the subject matter. And you are you. So this is an opportunity where you can engage in group work. You can exercise. You can practice the skills as a team. And we allow opportunities for you to ask questions. So a lot of student uh, you know, interaction will take place. So this is how we engage with our students because we've got a large group, you know, a large number of students. So we see you in smaller groups. We see you in smaller groups to talk to you, to get to know you. So teaching is quite personalized in that way. All right. So th this is one of our workshops. OK, so next, moving on, art exhibition. OK, so that was critical thinking. This is more on creative thinking. All right. So when we talk about art, art is very subjective. Yeah, art is very subjective. So what we decided one day, OK, let's take the students out of engineering, IT and business. You know, let's show another new field area where you could connect that with yourself. So this was actually a very good session because students were looking at art and painting from a different perspective. So when we came back, we had very good, uh, very interesting discourse took place with, uh, you know, among students. So this is also a way of seeing things from a different perspective, because uh, a good critical thinker is not a person who just looks things from one dimension. So these are the areas, you know, we will ex uh, expose you to so that you will have wider experience. Yeah, so that's our art exhibition one of the activities we have presented, and major university. I'm not sure if you heard of major university. OK, it's uh, it's in Japan. So this is one of the many summer programs we have organized. So students not just come and study with us for the whole foundation and continue degree. That's four years commitment. We also have a lot of students from different countries they come during summer programs sometimes they come for a short duration so that is actually a very good opportunity for our students in APU because this is not just Japanese students you see in the picture they are actually collaborating with our local students our foundation students so this is how we expose you to a wider you know culture so you don't have to go to Japan all the way we have students from there as well, not just Japan, Korea, China, and there are many other countries, even France, they come. So we do this kind of project. So it's an opportunity for our students as well to co-work with them, to collaborate with them, to understand their culture and so on. So yeah, so that's one of the activities that we do, one of the academic activities we do. So that's all from me. Thank you, Nelfi. Hello, hi. So now, thank you, Anu. So now uh, I am going to bring you to, uh, to share with you some of the uh, non-academic activities that we also offer to our students and uh, what we, our students have actually um, done. Yeah, so let's take a look at the first activity. So we um, stress a lot on um, social awareness campaigns at APU. So this is one of the uh, events that uh, we organized uh, with the students. Uh, so this is a, a No to Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Uh, so the students learn a lot about uh, human trafficking, the issues, and this is a global issue. So uh, this is something that really opened up yes, the students' eyes on um, social, social problems as, as such. And uh, we also stress a lot on the importance of mental health at APU. Uh, so we have also organized a mental, ho uh, mental health awareness campaign. So here we had um, a week long um, campaign, uh, activities filled with activities. So we had a series of talks, uh, seminars yeah, to, um, to, um, to make students more aware of uh, the importance of understanding uh, these issues. Uh, so we had uh, also activities booth, experiential booth, where students actually learn uh, the different uh, different types of uh, mental health and uh, the seriousness of uh, uh, this, this, these issues. 
uh, and uh, we also um, help students to uh, to share yeah, their experience uh, with a lot of experts that we had invited uh, for the event. So that was uh, on mental health. Now I will share with you um, the talent show. So we also encourage students to uh, be creative and to showcase the talents. So here we have um, a, a program, uh, a concert actually, uh, that was actually organized by the students themselves uh, to, because uh, these are some group of students, they are not, uh, you know, uh, we don't have any uh, music program, uh, rela music related programs, uh, but these are students from different different fields like engineering, computing, business, uh, but they they have the similar interests, the same interest in music. So they wanted to um, throw a concert and uh, we gave them all the support and here they are uh, showcasing their talents. So this is what they really enjoyed themselves and we also did enjoy the performances that night. And uh, we also uh, engage students in continuous effort uh, in uh, you know, community services uh, such as this. So here we have um, uh, a collaboration with UNHCR. So we have uh, our students uh, sending supplies to uh, the refugees. Uh, this was quite reason, as you can see, everyone was wearing masks. Uh, this was done a few months back, I think about a couple of months back. So sending um, food supply to the refugee shelters. Uh, so this really helps our students to understand, you know, the uh, the importance of uh, of community services, and uh, it also helps to um, to build uh, teamwork. As you can see, students from uh, different different nationalities, different different countries, they are all helping up. Uh, helping out for this uh, refugee empowerment uh, project. So this is something that we do, not just a one-off event. So this is a continuous effort. Every every now and then, uh, we do send students uh, for these uh, different projects and different activities uh, at UNHCR uh, refugee shelters. Uh, we also have um, programs with an uh, activities at SPCA. Uh, so at SPCA, this is actually not new. We have been doing this for uh, almost five years already, over five years. Uh, this is also a continuous effort where uh, our students are there regularly. So they um, they will go and uh, help out and volunteer uh, at the animal shelter, uh, you know, bringing out uh, dogs for walks and so on. And so this is uh, also um, a continuous effort that we have to engage students with uh, community services. Um, besides uh, refugee shelters, we also bring students um, to orphanage uh, visitations for orphanage visitations. Uh, so students even, uh, some students even, you know, they took the, their own effort to find um, these homes and uh, all this uh, supply, they would bring it to the homes and not just, uh, you know, uh, bringing in supplies, but they also organize activities um, with the children at the, at the homes uh, to engage with them and uh, they really enjoy it. And this is also something that we do every now and then. Uh, but of course, now during the pandemic, um, it's quite restricted, but we still uh, do send supplies to these homes. Uh, and yeah, so that's actually all from me, uh, the orphanage visitation. So these are some of the uh, activities that, um, that we offer uh, at APU, uh, regardless whatever uh, program that you choose. Uh, we have these uh, programs offered to the students. And yeah, so that's all I have uh, to share with you. And now let's hear from our students uh, on their journey and um, yeah, how did they choose their pre-university program? So over to Pauline and Sutej. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anu and Ms. Nalfi. A very good morning to everyone who's watching this live webinar about the importance of selecting the right pre university program to prepare you for your future. So we really hope everyone's safe, healthy, and just really hanging on in there, you know, during this tough time. Today, we are going to be sharing our experiences in APU and also about the reasons on why we chose APU to pursue our desired courses. But before that, let us just introduce ourselves. So my name is Sutej and I'm currently doing my first semester of foundation in engineering. I just joined APU about two months back in April, right after my SPM in March, using my SPM forecast results. And that's all about me. So Pauline, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, good morning. I'm Pauline Fujin, an APU student currently doing my second semester at Foundation Online after doing my AS levels in Qatar. 
I chose to do foundation due to a change of interests, which resulted in my AS level subjects not being viable for the degree I wanted. So now here I am. So to start us off, uh, Sutej, why did you choose APU? The simplest reason is because APU was really close to my house. It's just about 15 to 30 minutes drive from my home to APU. But the main reason is APU was one of the very few universities which offered the course that I wanted to pursue. I'm interested in doing mechatronic engineering for my degree, and it was really hard for me to find you know, universities which offered this program. Other universities just had the basic engineering courses such as electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical and electronic engineering, but it was just really hard to find mechatronic engineering. APU was one of the very few universities to offer mechatronic engineering and that made me choose APU. So moreover, my sisters also studied in APU. I could see how much this university had an impact on them. They hosted multiple events and I've even participated in some of it before I joined APU. And I'm not gonna lie guys, but those events in APU are really fun. You know, I experienced cultural diversity, students were very friendly and the lecturers were very supportive and guided the students on how to organize events. And I really want to gain all those experiences and that made me want to choose APU. So Pauline, how about you? How was your journey into APU? Well, being an international student, the distance wasn't really a deciding factor of my choice, but the diversity in the de design department was. I have a friend in her first year of her industrial design degree, and she has reiterated that, that the design department in APU is really good and that the resources and materials that APU provides is really helpful. As well as the professors, she tells me that she's grown a lot compared to the foundation because of them, and that alongside the critical analyses and passion for design, they're friendly and easy to talk to as well. But the most important factor of a university for me personally would be the student atmosphere. Coming from an international school, my community has always been very diverse. So when I heard that the student body comes from come from 130 different countries and that it's ranked first for international students in the QS Asia University rankings among many of APU's other notable awards, um, I was sold. Uh, so Sitej, why did you choose foundation over getting a diploma? I chose foundation because I was not confident to choose something very specific in diploma. I know I say that I'm thinking of doing mechatronic engineering for my degree but I felt that I just needed some time to think and be very sure on what I really wanted to do. That's very important to me because I don't know, I don't I don't want to be regretting you know my decision later in the future. But I had a general idea on what I wanted to do. I knew that I'm going to be doing something related to engineering, hence that is why I chose to do foundation in engineering because I'm not going to be learning about a specific course, but it's going to be teaching me about the basics and fundamentals about engineering. So this gives me a chance to know what engineering is going to be about. And I have a year, about a year to choose the course that I'm really interested and passionate about to pursue my degree. You're doing foundation as well, right? Aren't you in your second semester? How is it so far? Um, yeah, I just started it and it's been great so far. When I first started out, I was actually going down the business pathway as I've heard great things from that department as well. But after a lot of thought, I switched to this. I switched to design with only two forms to fill for the process. So it was reassuring to know that I could switch pathways easily and that my decision when entering foundation wasn't something I was stuck with and that I could keep developing my skills and thoughts to really be firm in my final decision. And so far, design has been great. The professors are welcoming and open and the lessons and exercises have been interesting and engaging as well. Uh, with design theory and practice being my favorite class so far as the professor gives us interesting prompts to work with. How about you? Um, what's your experience like while doing foundation? Foundation has been pretty fun so far, even though classes are fully online. I've been only studying here for about 10 weeks and man, I've learned so much. You know, the thing that I like the most about semester one of foundation is that they really focus on developing students' soft skills. They have modules focusing on communication skills and personal development. And those modules are very important because students will be able to improve their communication skills which is crucial in the working world. And they'll also learn to manage the emotions, time, relationship, and much more. And it's very interesting, guys. The lecturers always put in so much effort in making their students understand. And they also try to keep the class alive and interactive by having multiple activities among classmates. Now, some of you might be you know, terrified because classes are fully online and you might be wondering how to make friends. Well, you guys don't have to worry about that because there's going to be so many group activities, group assignments, group presentations. And that's probably how you're going to be making new friends or at least 
that's how I meet my friends in the past 10 weeks. So we know about design, but how are the other foundation courses so far? Do you know? Um, yeah, I asked some of my friends, but also keep in mind that we've just finished the second week of semester two, which is when specialized modules start. And there's not a lot of progress in terms of content, but this is what my friends have had to say so far. So for computing and technology, they've just started going into the physical components of a computer and a visual programming. But she said that she's looking forward to more as her professors make her more motivated to learn. Um, and for business, my friend said that with a lot of the topics introduced, they'll discuss the business side of it, but also a personal side of it as well. For example, they'll talk about finance in a business and a professional business setting, uh, but also discuss how to manage expenses in their daily life. Um, lastly, for engineering, my friend shares classes with the computing pathway, so he's also learning a bit of programming. But he's only gone through the introduction phases for engineering, so there's not much to be said about the content. But as for the professors, he says they're very professional and both the classes and them have been interesting and fun to interact with. Um, so that's it from uh, Sutej and I about the foundation course. And I hope what's been said persuades you a little further to enroll into APU's diploma or foundation course. Thanks again to Ms. Nelfi, Ms. Anuratha, and Dr. Saravinder for inviting us. Now for the diploma students, Nagam and Diraj. Thank you. Hello everyone and good morning. Thank you, uh, Pauline, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Dear Singil. I am in my SEM2 currently of uh, my diploma, which is in business, uh, business Administration in APU. Hello and good morning to you all. My name is Nagam and I'm from Palestine. Currently, I am in my second semester doing Diploma in Business Administration. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, our thought processes uh, when we're picking our our course and how we're doing currently in our diploma program. So uh, let me just start off by saying that right after SPM, uh, me and my peers and my friends, we all thought that uh, rushing into uni and getting into uh, the most prestigious university as quickly as possible would benefit us the most. Uh, basically, what we thought was... Uh, if we entered fast and we graduated fast, we could basically uh, get our jobs faster and would basically make us uh, ahead of everyone else. What about you, Nagam? Um, for me, when I first uh, graduated, uh, I decided that I want to, to carry on with my studies and to go with... Uh, like you know a degree so i first looked into uh, a reputable university to be honest that will not only focus on my academics but also uh you know on my future career and change my uh, perspective perspectives for that uh, for the best and fortunately apu was on top of the list likewise uh even even me i was looking for reputable universities and it took me some time actually uh, instead, I took a gap year trying to find reputable uh, universities. But uh, not only that, uh, I took a gap year for many other reasons too. And one of them being uh, it is to be able to make my decision on uh, choosing a diploma program because I knew it was going to be specific. So what exactly uh, made you choose uh, the diploma program, Nagam? I have personal uh, interest in uh, studying business administration and I have always seen myself in a managerial position. So studying diploma in business administration uh, was the first step uh, to explore uh, my passion and achieve my goals. So, and I think diploma gave me the opportunity to identify and examine deeply uh, and discover my passion. Very well said. Uh... I think the same could be same uh, could be said for me because uh, it actually took me a while to realize that I was a business minor. It took me a year to be exact. Uh, so on during my gap year, I actually spent uh, more time uh, learning more about myself and finding out more about myself because I knew I wouldn't I wasn't able to do foundation uh, due to my SPM results. But uh, I was I was okay with you know settling for a diploma. But I knew it had to be something uh, correct something that i would not regret in the future because it's a specific 
course it's not something you can uh, divert into like different pathways you know it's a specific course so um i started traveling more i started uh going out more exploring more and finding out more about myself to know about my strengths my weaknesses what i like my interests my disinterests and uh uh over time i came i, I came over the fact that uh i had three three courses in mind uh which was psychology business and mass communication uh on top of that list of course was psychology but over time i learned that i was more business minded and the business environment would be more tailored towards my liking and i would be better in the business environment so that was basically how i chose a business administration you no know, i thought that i would be good in that environment and i would excel in it um yeah so so far diploma has been treating me well uh, it's been going great i've been doing really well and my lecturers have been really supportive nagam uh, what about you I thought at the beginning, I thought, you know, uh, doing virtual online uh, classes would be very hard and uh, I didn't think that it would go uh, smoothly. But, uh, you know, the lecture at APU proved, uh, proved me wrong. You know, it's very, uh, I was mistaken, you know, it's very, it's going very good now. And, uh, you know, by, uh, this is my second semester and I think it's going very well. Yeah. Likewise, Nagam, I feel like it's going very well for me too. Uh, the thing is with APU and their lectures is their lectures are excellent, basically. They make you so comfortable with class. They make you feel ready whenever there's a task at hand, you know. Whenever there's an assignment, a project, or even a presentation, they make you feel ready and feel confident to, to, like, to challenge it head on and, you know, without any uh, worries or anxiety or whatever. And that to me is really special because uh, you can't find that in most university. You know, you can't find uh, lecturers trying to polish your soft skills and your uh, personal development, your character development as well. And uh, yeah, APU has really done a good job with uh, hiring their lecturers, in my opinion. And uh, the cultural diversity, Nagam, what about the cultural diversity in APU? You know what, uh, like for me, what has uh, encouraged me the most to join APU is when I, uh, like, uh, by joining APU, I think, um, like, when I first checked their website and through a mutual friend, um, APU promises a multinational experience. Like, for the students, it gathers students from different parts of the world. And I think this extends a wonderful experience. Uh, like you can learn uh, and express and develop communication skills, like your communication skills beyond the academic uh, boundaries. And this may, this may teach us things that uh, which are not taught in uh, books and articles, you know. So I, I really like it there. I was very scared at the beginning because I was from Palestine and I thought it's not easy to make friends, but uh, I think it's very easy and um, I, I think it was good, yeah. Yeah, and one more thing that's so special about ETU is that they give you an opportunity to learn about different cultures and traditions, you know. You have uh, over, if I'm not mistaken, over 200 countries or something like that. Uh, I don't know the exact figures, but yeah, there are, there are a lot of different languages and uh, different people from different backgrounds, which to me is a really beautiful feature because it helps, it treats everyone equally, you know, it helps uh, everyone see everyone as their own. And once you start learning about these cultures and traditions and new languages, it's, it's so fascinating, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I guess that's all we have to say. And uh, I hope everyone is excited to start their journey in university. And I wish everyone good luck in their future endeavors. Likewise, I wish you all the best. And I hope to see you and meet you in campus one day. Thank uh, you. Mira. Thank you so much, uh, Dheeraj and Nagam. Okay, um, that was a very informative and informative session by all the speakers. Okay, thank you for your sharing. 
Okay, so now let's move on to our Q&A session. So for our Q&A, I would like to invite Dr. Savinder, uh, Ms. Anu and Ms. Nelfi. Okay, uh, at the moment we have um, one question. So for those who are still watching, so please feel free to drop off your questions at our comment box. Okay, the first question we have is um, from Ms. Izni. So for the module start in foundation program, what is the weightage? As in like, how is the percentage for assignments or coursework and exam? Okay, I'll take that question yeah. as well, right? Yeah. Hi, Izni. Thank you so much for the question. Very curious student, okay? Um, in school, usually you have exam, okay? You study for the whole year and then you have test, you have midterm and so on. Okay, in university, depending on your module, some of the modules we call it 100% in course, meaning there is no final exam, but you have assignments to do, you have projects to do. So that's one of uh, one of the ways of assessing students. Some modules will have a combination of coursework and final exam. Coursework can be a project, can be a take-home assignment, it depends. So some modules, it's a combination of both, or some of it, you don't have final exam, just assignments. All right, but we do not give students like one assignment and assess you throughout the semester. You'll have a few assessments, okay, assignments to do. Isni, I hope that um, it answers your question. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Anu. But on addition to that, how does it applicable for the students, like, you know, foundation in design, as in like, because design, what we know is that they are involved into many, um, yeah. you know, uh, workshops and yeah, in studios and stuff. So how does it work for them? I believe uh, in design or even engineering, it's more on the practical part. Because you, if, we, if, we, if you are going to be a designer, you, we can't just test you on theory. So courses like that, you'll have a lot of hands-on work to do, projects to do, portfolios are very common in uh, design module. In fact, we have got two modules called uh, uh, portfolio, major portfolio one and two. So we have modules like that, just grooming students on how to do projects because that's what the employer wants. So we have to prepare you for that. I see. Engineering right. students spend a lot of time in the lab. So that's oh. part of your assessment. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Uh, at the moment, we don't receive any more questions. Okay. So, um, so thank you everyone um, for attending uh, the session for today. Okay, so I hope um, for those who are still out there, who are still confused, okay, on the pathways and all that, um, please um, consider, all right, our foundation program in APU is so flexible, okay, uh, by the sharing by like Dr. Savinder, Miss Nelfi and Miss Anoda is so helpful, all right, it helps you to decide on your future um, degree program as well okay so um i would like to share okay um that we will have another session around 12 pm today okay on why ai and big data are skills for the future job so um i hope everyone can stay tuned okay um it's another like 40 minutes away from us now okay so uh thank you so much for everyone okay dr Savinda, miss nelfi and miss anu Okay, okay, so for those uh, who are still here, for more updates, all right, please follow our Facebook page. And those who have missed out our previous session, please follow, uh, please rewatch the watch, uh, watch the replay from our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Okay, thank you so much and have a good day, everyone. Have a good day, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.